Anybody happy to be saved here this morning? Amen. Amen. The Lord is good and merciful and gracious, and I love the Lord. Anybody here love the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Well, if I can find my notes, we'll look at them for a bit. Yeah, it's all here. Amen. Father, let the glory of your presence manifest in every heart and life here today. We're not satisfied just to sing some songs and read some scripture, but we're satisfied when you put your blessing on our efforts. That's all we want. We want your anointing to be in this place. And you said if we get together in your name that you'd be here. So we acknowledge your presence and we thank you for the privilege of being able to sing how, how great is our God. And we look forward to the day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That day will come. But Lord, we bow today. We declare it today and we honor you. And thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. There's a classic scripture that, that everybody is familiar with in John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Every boy and his dog knows that scripture, you know. But I was talking to the Lord on the way over here for practice this morning at 9 o'clock. And uh, on the way across town, I just, I said, Lord, I don't usually tell you what I'm praying, but it's relevant to what we're talking about today. And I said, Father, if there was a Father's Day that included eternity and and it included, you know, heaven and all that, I, I, I would certainly say Happy Father's Day to you, but it doesn't seem to cut it. And I never had it out of my mouth before. Up from my spirit, and I believe it was the Lord, I heard the scriptures where, and, and you know, you know, you all know, in Matthew 6 and 9 through 13, the Lord's Prayer. It just came up, our Father. And I said, thank you, Father. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> it's just one of those times when the Lord kind of like smiles and say, yeah, I'm your Father. And uh, aren't you glad that Jesus was okay for his disciples to be taught this way and passed on down through to us today and for us to pray, our Father, our Father, my Father. So, I want to talk a little bit about what my father has done for us today, and we're going we're gonna to spend a little bit of time, and I certainly don't plan to exhaust the subject, but just scratch the surface a little bit more. I want to talk about the blood, because our father gave the ultimate sacrifice when he gave his son. He didn't give his son just to come down and do some miracles. He didn't give his son just to come down and and spend some time and, and show who he was, he gave his son to die on the cross and shed his blood. And the Lord has impressed on me, and I'm sure some of you felt the same way and you've noticed the same thing, that a lot of times we get to the place where we, we take for granted the blood that was shed. Oh, it's not, it, it, it's, it's not that we don't believe it. I, I believe every Christian who's been born again believes that the blood had to be shed. That the blood of Jesus is efficacious to take away all sin. We all believe that. But I believe we can get to the place where we get so used to it that it's just another doctrine. It's just another 
truth. It's, it's, it's just another part of what we believe. But the Lord impressed on me that we need to stir it up again. We need to remind ourselves again the importance of the blood of Jesus because, because everything else you have and everything else you are and everything else you experience, everything else that happens to you as a believer can only come because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Somebody say, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I just want to go back and read some scriptures and just remind you of where this thing was originating in the Old Testament. I don't want to go back. Um, we could go back into, into the Garden of Eden and go back to Cain and Abel and how the blood spoke to God from the ground. We, we're not going to go there, but I want to go back to, to Exodus where the Israelites were delivered from their, their bondage that they'd been in for 400 years. And uh, when God was ready to deliver them, he did a lot of miracles and, and signs trying to get the attention of Pharaoh so that he would let God's people go. After all of these signs and wonders took place, the final one came where God said that the death angel would pass through. In other words, the ultimate judgment and the firstborn in every household would die. That was so very significant because the firstborn was the blessed child. You know, in every organ, wherever you go, and, and, and culture, the firstborn has always had some significance, and sometimes a great significance, but the firstborn was going to die, and God said, this is what I want you to do. You take a lamb or a goat, you slay it, and you put the blood on the lintels and the side post of your house. I want to read these scriptures so you know what God said to the people. He said to, to Moses, he said, and, they, and they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. In verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Now you, you notice the blood is being put on the lentils of the door post the entrance of the house. And they are going to be inside the house. So you put it as a token. It represents something. And he said, you put it on the houses where you are when, when I see the blood. When I see the blood, I, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. Judgment came on Egypt. The Israelites were in Egypt. But their protection came because of the application of the blood. That's a significant statement right here in verse 13. When I see the blood. I want to read a few verses here. Not all of them. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take your, you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. 
and you should take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood, now Moses is passing this message along, upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in to your houses to smite you. In other, in other words, God would protect them from the angel of death that would go through the land and destroy every firstborn. In, in Leviticus chapter 17, it gives you some of the significance as to why the blood of Jesus had to be spilled, sh shed on the cross and whatever. And I just want to read this. Like I said, I'm just going to go through a couple of verses here and, and establish something before we get to what I want to talk about. In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now this is from the Bible. This is not a medical journal. This is not a doctor speaking to you this morning. This is God. He said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. Now remember what we said a few minutes ago at the beginning in verse 13? He said, and when I see the blood, why, why, why when he sees the blood? Because it is the blood that will make an atonement for your souls. It is the blood that will cover you and protect you from ultimate judgment. It is the blood that will bring deliverance to you in spirit, in soul, and in body. It is the blood that needs to be applied to every aspect of your life, even natural things that you use every day. Trust that the blood of Jesus is visible when you claim it and declare it over your household and over everything you own and everything you use. Because when the blood is applied and when you release your faith in the blood of Jesus, the protection of heaven comes, the protection of the blood of the Lamb comes, and the angel of death that would like to kill you is stopped in his tracks today just as he was then. We, we, we get used to this. Yes, a man. I believe in the blood. The precious blood of Jesus. You know what? We can get so flippant that it's just a doctrine. It's not just a doctrine. It is our life. It's our deliverance. It's our salvation. It's our eternal door that brings us into that which will never end and is blessed beyond any measure we could extend. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Somebody say, I claim the blood. Now I'd like to encourage you, don't say it just because I told you to say it, but think about situations in your life. Think about how the enemy has locked in situations that you've never been able to fix. Look that thing right in the face and say, I claim the blood over you. We cannot back off from this. We cannot let it become nonchalant. We cannot ever get so used to it that it, it's just another thing we pass through. It's just another cliche type doctrine. God stirred me up in this. Now, I, I, I from time to time, I've gone around my house and, 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 and anointed every corner of the house. You say, that's radical. Yeah, I really don't care what you think. I care what God thinks. Somebody say, amen. I claim the blood. I claim the blood. I was listening to a preacher a little while ago, and he was telling a story about this other guy that he knew, and he said, He wanted to put the blessing of God and the protection of God over his household. And there was a, 
a tornado that was coming through. So he, he wasn't sure what to do, so he anointed his shoes, the bottom of his shoes, and got up and walked all over his roof, roof of his house. The anointing oil and the blood of Jesus and claimed the blood over his house and anointed his house. When that tornado swept through, it went to the right, it went to the left, and passed on through, and nothing of his household was hurt or maimed. I'm telling you, this is real, and the devil is working overtime to get the church so taken up in trying to be like the world that we forget it's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that makes us different. We've not been redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we are peculiar people. And any time we decide to put the blood aside, one, you know, old line denomination decided they're going to go through the hymn book and take every song in there about the blood out. We don't want a slaughterhouse religion. I'm afraid you can't have any true religion without having what we might want to call a slaughterhouse religion. You've got to have the blood. You got to have the blood. It's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. When I see the blood, God said. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I just want to refer to one more scripture reference, and there's so much we could go into, but I'm not going to take the time to do all that. But I want to I want to refer to Joshua chapter two, verse eighteen and nineteen. Y'all know the story probably of Rahab. Rahab had nothing going for her. She was a prostitute. Back then they called him a harlot. But something inside of her reached out to bless the people of God that came in through to spy out the land. She, she, she stretched that that was on the inside. Listen, I don't care how much trouble you're in today, how much problems are coming your way, and what has gone wrong, and how many mistakes you've made. There's something in your belly that if you just connect with it and release it, heaven will come to you and help you and deliver you. You just got to tie a knot and hang on because God knows about your situation. He knows about your problem. He knows your weakness. And your flaws, he's seen them all. Amen? He's seen them all. He knows knows my strengths, so-called, and my weaknesses. He knows your strengths and your weaknesses. But he wants you and I to claim the blood and put our faith and confidence in him. And when he does that, he will want you to accent the blood of Jesus. And Rahab decided, I'm going to bless these people. There's something about these people that have come through here. I've heard the stories. <laughs> hey, come on, you've heard the preaching. You've heard the word. And, and your belly, your spirit man has grabbed the whole of that word. Don't, don't, don't ever let it just lie there. Stir it up, stir it up. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. Listen, the preaching of the word, the anointed preaching from the word of God that won't back up an inch is, is a gift from God. Not just the prophetic word that comes to you, but the preaching of the word. It comes to you and it's a gift from God so you can lock into it, lock onto it, and let it direct your path and heaven will come to attention and help you every time. Just trust God. Just trust God. Rahab said, I'm going to help these people. And she, she deceived the individuals that, that were trying to kill them and helped them, hid them, and sent them out in another direction, and told them how long to wait. She knew the, the, how, how they worked in her, in her city. And when, the, when they were leaving, let me read this for you so, so uh, you actually know the story is there. Joshua chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. You need to read the whole thing sometimes just, just for reference. This is what you must do. When we invade your land, this is what the, the guys told her when she said we're going to help you. Tie this red, I'm reading from the Good News Bible. That's why I did that intentionally because in the King James it says scarlet. I like where it says this red cord. 
because scarlet is red, and here it says red. Tie this red cord to the window you let us down from. Get your father and your mother and your brothers and all your families together in your house. Well, that's a preaching verse right there. Release your faith to believe for your household to be saved. Let the truth that has set you free be spilled over and let it be influential to every member of your household. Don't back up one inch. Hell will try to steal them. Hell will try to take them away from you. But you claim the blood over your family, over your household, and you declare not one person in my household will miss heaven. Say it. Yeah, but you don't know what I'm doing. Say it. Say it. We talked about it in Bible study. You know, well, it's easy to say. Well, say it. It's easy for you to say. That's why I'm saying it. God can work with, Father, I claim my household for the kingdom. Yeah, but you don't know what my Shut up about your household and how bad it is. Say what God wants you to say, and he wants you to release your faith by saying what you want. I claim my household for the kingdom. Not one will be lost. Come on, somebody in here needs to shout, I claim my household. I claim the blood over my children. Come on. I claim the blood over my family. I claim the blood over everything they touch. Not one will be lost. It's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Don't ever stop believing in the blood of Jesus. It don't mean you're some super spiritual Christian above everybody else. It just means you believe in what the Bible says about the blood. And we haven't even gone to the New Testament. I'm going to touch on a few verses there. So we know this is not just some fly-by-night doctrine. This is it. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is what has got us out of hell and into heaven. This is it. And the rest of it is just gravy. Icing. You know what bugs me? I hope I can get back to where it was. You know what bugs me about people who get on international TV and, and, and they say, yeah, but you know, there are many ways to God besides Jesus. Are you stupid? You mean God sent his son into the earth? Jesus went into the garden and pleaded, Father, if there's any other way, He cried. He sweat great drops of blood. He said, if there's any other way, let's do it another way. But not my will, but yours be done. Why do you think that was so? Because there was no other way. There was no other way to save me. No other way to save me. You understand that? You don't know me, the old me. You don't know how dangerous I was walking. And some of you in the same, same boat, there was no other way to save you. Somebody could clean you up and get you to stop drinking, smoking, cussing, running around. That wouldn't save you. Make you smell better. Make you look like a better person. But there's only one way to save me, and that was through the blood of a spotless human. So when I hear somebody talking about their flippant ideas about how many ways there are to God, it irritates me. There's only one way. And that's why Jesus came. Amen. That's why he came. That's why he came. Don't ever stop believing. I don't care what Oprah says. I don't care what backslidden preachers say. I don't care what Christians who want to be like the world say. The scriptures say it. The Bible says it. 
when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. You mean my mistakes, my failures, all the things that I blew it on? You mean you'll still accept me? Yeah. Because you trust in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my father. That's my father. Let me get back to Rahab and go on into the New Testament. Let me read it again. This is what you must do when we invade your land, when the judgment comes. Tie this red cord to the window, the one that you let us down from your roof with. Get your father and your mother and your brothers and all your family together in your house. I I just feel like preaching that again. I believe God is stirring us up saying, listen, don't, don't, don't even think about not claiming the blood for your household. Amen? Amen. Maybe I need to say it one more time. Don't even think about not claiming the blood for your house. Stop whining about what they're doing wrong and start claiming the blood for them. Amen. Now maybe I can go a little further. If anyone, listen to this. Verse 19, if anyone goes out of the house, that's why we need to claim the blood for them. Back then, it was tangible, seeable, on the door. Today, 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 it's your faith that God is looking for. I claim the blood for my house. If anyone goes out of the house, his death will be his own fault. And we will not be responsible. In other words, you can't blame God. But if anyone is in the house with you is harmed, then we will be responsible. God says, if you claim the blood, Everything is under control. Amen. Now let's go to the New Testament because you need to know that this is not just an Old Testament thing we're talking about here that's referring to it. This is talked about in the New Testament. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to get through these scriptures as quickly as I can. Hebrews 9.13 For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes and ephor sprinkled and sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purine of the flesh... Listen to verse 14. How much more? Everybody say, how much more? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Just like God said, I want you to get a lamb without spot. They were not to get a maimed animal. They were to get a perfect, as much as possible, as perfect animal to die that the blood would cover their sins for a period of time. For a person or for a nation. First Peter chapter 1, and I referred to this just now, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Your deliverance, your protection, your eternity, only is secured by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood. With the precious blood of Jesus, we've been redeemed. Hebrews 9.22, this is a very important scripture verse that ties with The scripture we read from Leviticus earlier, life is in the blood. Well, look at this here in Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood is no remission 
or forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus had to go to the cross and shed his blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, this is a doctrine that just goes all the way through the New Testament. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. The reason Jesus had to come and take on a human body is because there was nobody in the earth who was sinless. He had to come and live a sinless life so he could shed his blood from a human body that he lived in so you and I could claim that blood for our salvation. And when he sees the blood of his son, he'll pass over you when judgment comes. I'm telling you, like, I don't, what, what people say and preach outside of the word really is not worth listening to. You have to have scripture to back up what you preach or you're wasting your time. But the scriptures are clear that there is a day of the Lord that is coming. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's not coming as a meek and mild lamb to be crucified. He's coming back as king, as judge of all the earth. He's coming back to take vengeance. Now, this is New Testament. All you got to do is go to 1 Thessalonians and read it. Chapter 1. Maybe 2 Thessalonians. I'm not sure which one, but it's there. I, I won't go get it for you now. Taking vengeance on all those who believe not the gospel. In other words, you must believe in the gospel. The fact that Jesus died, lived a sinless death. He went to the cross and died, and he rose again on the third day. His blood is what cleanses you. Romans 5, verse 9. Since therefore we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Now, people want to leave these verses out and, and just cut out parts and whatever. But you've been protected from the judgment of God and the wrath of God because you believed in the blood of Jesus. Any church, any pastor, any group that says, we're not going to preach the blood, we're not going to be believing in the blood of Jesus anymore, they become lost. You cannot be saved outside of believing in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. You cannot be saved outside of believing in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to wash your sins away. You cannot. You can say what you like, but it doesn't change the scriptures. It does not change the scriptures. Let me read from Revelation chapter 12. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pleading the blood is something that the church needs to get back to. Claiming the blood of Jesus, acknowledging the blood of Jesus is something we cannot afford to, to just let, let slide. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, Hebrews 9, verse 11 through 14, and, and 22, and Hebrews 12, verse 24, all of these scriptures refer to the fact that the blood of Jesus is, is included in our, our faith 
in our walk with God, in our trust in God. It has to be there. You can read these scriptures if you want. The blood is our defense. It declares that we are not guilty before God. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ causes us to stand free from the penalty of sin. There's no other way to be free. It gives us authority and dominion over demonic powers. You claim the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ against demonic powers and you hold your ground. Don't just do it because somebody said do that. Do it and believe it in your heart. With the heart man believes and with the mouth you speak and you confess what you believe. If you believe that the blood of Jesus Christ saves, delivers, and protects, and defends, then when you speak that with your mouth, God will send His angels to help you. God will deliver you and set you free. God will make a way where there is actually no way to be seen. He's the one that knows how to open doors that nobody can shut and shut doors that nobody can open. That's the kind of God that we're serving. He knows how to put the devil in his place, and you can do it in the name of Jesus when you have confidence in the blood that was shed. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, there's an abiding presence. There is an abiding presence of the power of God on your life and in any area of your life that you apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Until you change your mind, there is that power that's working for you. I mean, that's why we sing. Even when you can't see it, He's working. When you can't feel it, He's working. But there has to be this release of your faith in what was done on Calvary. What was done on the cross. There has to be this release of faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed. And we believe that. You see, we read the scripture from Exodus where the angel of death came through and Every firstborn in Egypt died, even Pharaoh's firstborn. But when it came to the Israelites, because they applied the blood to their households, not one of their firstborn died. Now, prior to this, everybody was flippant and everybody was, you know, those Israelites, what are they talking about? Now, we can handle these plagues. We got through all of them. But the morning after the death angel went through, they weren't making a joke of the Israelites' so-called superstitious beliefs. Because now Pharaoh says, get out of here. Go. They got a glimpse of the God of Jacob. They got a glimpse of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob manifesting himself. When Jesus comes to take us out of here, and for those who are foolish enough to believe it, he will come. Because nothing God ever did in the earth seems sensible. You say, how do you know that? I went through the Bible looking for something sensible. Couldn't find. I just like, you know, just try to find a sensible miracle. Just seriously, we talked about this before. Just try to find one. I tried. I had a list this long about miracles. Every one of them was like, are you kidding? You, you used this? You did this? I mean, so... When the church gets to the place where you, well, really, he's going to just like whoosh, take everybody up. <laughs> yeah. So right now, while we're waiting for Jesus to come back and we're loving him and serving him today, 
People laugh at us because we believe such a silly doctrine. But the day after, they won't be laughing at your silly doctrine, your superstition, so-called. There will be people crying out to God because they've missed the opportunity to be caught up. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen? I should try to finish. I don't know what time it is. I kind of got carried away. And that's okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place, the holy place, the presence of God, by our nice worship songs? No. That's, that's, that's good. Our preaching? No. Look at it. We have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. All the things we do hinges on the fact that his blood was shed and that we have faith in the blood of Jesus. And that allows us to come before him. You see, your faith has to be in the blood of Jesus. Revelation 7, 14. I said to him, sir, you know, he said, who are these you know, there were thousands that came out of the tribulation. You studied the context, you'll know that they cried out, gave their lives, lost their lives. And he, he said, sir, who are these? And he said, sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There will never be. Can I say this? There will never be someone you meet in heaven who decided they didn't believe in the blood of Jesus. Do you know why Hundreds of thousands of animals were slain and blood was poured out on Jewish altars. Because until the perfect sacrifice came, the Lord Jesus Christ, these animals died pointing towards that perfect sacrifice. Every time the blood of an animal was spilled, it spoke of the coming sacrifice. The blood of Jesus. And the reason why the Israelites would obey God and do this is because they knew blood had to be spilled for them to be free from their sins from day to day and year to year. And our faith today is locked in on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When communion is done, and we're not going to do that this morning, but when we take communion and we gather around and we recognize the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're actually referring to the foundation of the gospel. Jesus said, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Think about that. When I see the blood, Paul told the Colossians he made peace 
Colossians 1.20, by the blood of the cross. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I want you to take that home with you today. Your heavenly father hasn't changed his mind about how things work. When all the blood was shed through the years on every altar, it spoke the blood of Jesus. And it cannot change. It cannot change. I don't want you to leave here today and think, yeah, that's, that, that's true. I'd like to see every one of us leave here today and check and see if our faith has been active in the blood of Jesus. I don't know, did you, did you prepare for that? I mentioned it to you. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you did that. I, I was busy getting ready. I didn't realize it. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Let's just join our faith together. Can we all stand? Maybe we could have the ushers come and they could just uh, arrange to see that everybody gets the emblems. And we'll release our faith together. Yes, please. I don't know if we, if we could sing uh, I Claim the Blood. It's, it's, it's an old song that most everybody knows who we should be able to do it. Maybe we could just pass these out. And Father, we just declare blessing over this. Grape juice and the emblem that represents the body of Christ. We just declare it blessed. And that it be a blessing to us as we, as we receive that today in the name of Jesus. And that we all together may release our faith and thank God that the blood was shed, that body was broken, so that our lives could be spared from judgment eternally and protected and preserved even in natural situations. We believe for that. We believe for that. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we just go ahead and, while oh, we're getting ready, most of you know how these work. You take the little silphine back and you get the bread, the wafer thing, and afterwards you pull back the whole thing and you get the grape juice. But we're believing together that as we, as we partake of this communion this morning, and I wasn't 100% sure if we, if we were prepared, but I'm so glad that we were, that it did work out that way. Thank you, Pastor John. Um, I want us to release our faith today. It's something we do to remind us that we believe. And sometimes, Joan and I have done it in our house together. And, and I'm sure some of you have done the same thing. Sometimes, do it by yourself. You know? Just reminding yourself that you believe. And I want you to look at the ugliest attack the devil has brought to you today. The ugliest attack. And I want you to smile at that while you're taking communion. Because the blood is more powerful than any attack the devil can bring. He, he, he trembles when you declare, I believe in the blood of Jesus. He shakes. You see, when you submit to God, like in James chapter 4, when you submit to God, listen to me closely. You cannot submit to God without believing that His blood Save the church. Remember we read from Acts 20? The church that he purchased with his own blood. You cannot submit to God and say, yeah, but I don't believe that. You don't know what you're talking about. I believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe his blood cleanses me and makes me totally free from sin. I believe that with all my heart. And when we partake of this this morning, 
let's just look at the situation that comes to your mind. Say, Father, I'm trusting you. Hell is backing off. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that anymore. I'm just going to trust you. I'm just going to trust you. I dare you to put your confidence in God today and don't take it out until Jesus comes. Amen? again in a minute Jesus said this and the Lord has brought it to my attention a few times in the last two or three weeks he said when the son of man returns will he find faith on the earth and a lot of times when I used to read that I'd be thinking yeah is there anybody going to be believing for miracles and healings and whatever and, and, and I believe that is a small portion of it but with what's happening in the world and what's happening in the church now, I believe he was saying, is, is there anybody going to be really believing that the blood of Jesus cleanses from sin? Is there anybody going to be believing in the sacrifice that was made Christ that was paid? Or is it going to be a ritualistic thing that has taken the blood out but we go through the motions? When this church takes the blood out, you won't see me here. But it's not going to happen. Paul said, I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's eat together and remember the broken body of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, the new covenant in my blood. In my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show or remember or point to the Lord's death until he come. Let's drink together as we thank God and remember the blood of the Lord Jesus.
read this scripture again before we dismiss. Or read it from Revelation 5, actually verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain. And by your blood, you ransomed people for God from every tribe, every language, every people, and every nation. redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Just, just go ahead and thank Him for a minute. I remember what I said to you a few minutes ago. Whatever situation that the enemy has been taunting you with could have to do with any area of your life claim the blood right now I claim the blood right now against every foul attack every demonic entity that would push and try to interfere with God's plan and purpose for myself and my household I claim the blood of Jesus right now I claim the blood of Jesus right now and I encourage you like I went through these scriptures fairly fast I could have been here three hours doing what we did this morning I still not exhaust even remotely the subject but I encourage you to, to just do your own study of this thing about the blood just, just, just find the scriptures because it's God didn't give us any leeway to go outside of it. There is none. It's the blood. So I claim the blood. Sing it again as we get ready to leave today. Just sing it again. I claim the blood.